I just got here. Why are you calling me again? This is a question I asked my then husband less than an hour after I sat down to tea with my girlfriend. And that was just right around the block. So is this familiar to you? When you go visit your friends or family, your partner continues to put them down and criticize them, calls you and asks you, when are you coming home? making fun of what they say or do, ridiculing their behavior, and making sure they tell you how much they don't like them and don't want to visit or even you to visit them. Then you go alone, even if it's just around the corner, and within an hour you get a phone call asking you when you're coming home. It's not as if he or she wants to do something special, they just want you home. Find out what this dysfunctional behavior is all about and what it is a warning sign of. Right now, you're listening to Scientific Healing with Dr. Anastasia Chopolis. You can benefit from the power of vibrational healing, which combines physics and ancient healing arts to develop a powerful system that has amplified results for hundreds of my clients and students. The most important factor in your life for health, wealth, and happiness are your relationships. You can discover more about scientific healing and the deceptively simple processes for interacting with others positively and effectively. Go to scientifichealer.com forward slash relationship to learn how to be energetically attractive to others and magnetically attract people to you. The right ones, not the wrong ones. So the behavior I just described in the intro is what is known as isolating behavior. This isn't about depressive behavior. This is abusive behavior on the part of the partner. So what are some of those signs that you are in the midst of isolating behavior? First, you find yourself in a situation where you have fewer and fewer contacts with your friends and family and even your coworkers. Your, next, your partner instigates arguments every time you attempt to see or visit other people, even if it is with him or her. You get worn out eventually and stop trying to have those contacts. Another one is your partner checks up on you, like reads your emails and texts, or uses a Finder app to locate you at all times. You find yourself answering 20 questions every time you are out of their sight. You may even find pictures and lies spread about you in social media or letters to your family and friends. You might find he or she tries to embarrass you in front of others. Extreme forms may be locking you in the house, keeping any mode of transportation or communication from you, like taking your keys and your phone and away from you. All of these situations amount to social isolation abuse, and it is harmful to both you and your relationship to that person. I have experienced many of these, maybe you have too, but there is hope for you. The isolating form of abuse is based on the other person feeling possessive of you, of you and them thinking they have the right to even own how you think and who influences you. Their ultimate fear is that they're not good enough for you because of their own dark thoughts and so they want to keep you for it themselves. This distorted thinking keeps many women and a few men afraid of leaving. The partner may even become suicidal because it's unbearable that the others might control you. So what's the best course of action against isolation from a partner? In cases where this is in the early stages of your relationship, the best thing to do is to reach out to other people in your life that love you. Insist on it. If you get an undue amount of resistance, you might need to rethink that relationship. Isolating behavior is abuse, make no mistake about it. It's not what that he or she loves you so much they want you for themselves, it's because they are afraid of you leaving. I heard from an ex, I knew one day that you would leave me as he was so impossible that it made it the only reasonable choice for my sanity and my health. 
Once you've gotten very isolated, it's time to find some professional help. You may have to do it in secret, and there are plenty of organizations that can help you with this. So the real question is, what can you do energetically for isolating abuse? Aside from a relationship healing and the daily cord cutting, I have used a manifestation technique that uses one of the infinite possibilities available to you. And before I go any further, the person that you are having this trouble with also needs healing and you have in some way enabled it. Like if you didn't stop it in the beginning, maybe because you were flattered by it or you wanted to be isolated yourself, you know, that could have helped it escalate. And so when you get a healing, you will help transform them too. Because I've worked with many one, you know, I don't ever heal the partner, right? I only heal the person. And I only suggest that the person get help. It's just like me when I was going to self-help groups. I got help for myself. And the relationship started to change balance. Right? And that's why I ended up eventually leaving when I thought that was impossible and I was afraid to go. So, and, you know, some of the manifesting that I'm talking about here, I used it very often. I wrote journals and journals and journals. I had, you know, like a whole shelf full of journals. I've since thrown them out because I didn't want the negative energy in my house. There was a lot of sadness in there. So let's talk about this manifesting technique. I have about four or five different videos or blog posts on and even podcasts on this topic. So let me describe two situations in which this worked really well. The first example is the one in which I was working at home with my partner. In other words, we were working together on a small business. And when I first started dating him, he was always neat, clean, and well-groomed. But when we married, he showered a lot less seldom, wore old, stretched out t-shirts, stained, you know, the neck all, uh, uh, his, his beard was growing and he wore pajama bottoms and sat all day in his easy chair all barefooted, right? And this is when I was working long hours to keep my mortgage paid and mostly he was on Facebook doing posts or running out and playing with his motorcycle. And this had to change or the relationship was going to end, period. I sat down and wrote down exactly what I wanted to have in my life, including someone that respected me enough to groom and dress nicely. I'm not talking three-piece suits. I'm just talking walking shorts and nice shirts, clean combed hair, clean shaven. And I wrote this all out in detail, including how the relationship was on thin ice and that I didn't go through what I'd gone through in my life to be with a person that was smelly, greasy, and unkempt. And I never showed him the writing. I just kept it in my journal. The very next day, he got up and showered, put on nice clothes, sat down in his chair, and started to do some paid work. I thought this was a fluke, right? I'm going, uh, that's kind of a funny coincidence. But it continued the rest of the time we were together. Right. And a second. So uh, uh, and it's it's just it worked like magic. I couldn't even believe it. And I continue to do things like that since not only in my relationship with him, but my relationship with other people in my family. So a second situation speaks more to the abusive situation that men and women feel isolated in. I watched a young mother, Amber, have her former boyfriend and biological father of her son, remember it's former boyfriend, Bill, struggle to get this former boyfriend to leave her home. He was supposed to have been there temporarily to help care for their son while she worked a temporary job. Amber first wanted her son to have his father around, even though they didn't have a relationship together. The rest of us could see this was not a healthy situation for her or her son. Anyway, her job came to an end and Bill refused to leave. Why should he? He had free food, free rent, 
and he wanted to continue being there even though he a lot of sp spent a lot of time being abusive isolating her and mostly sat around and played video games so even though bill and amber were no longer in an intimate relationship he was still all up in her business at first she wasn't sure about this manifesting method and how it would work so she sat down and wrote down exactly what she wanted amber clearly pictured him moving out of her place by the following weekend i mean we're talking from tuesday to saturday right moving out of her place by the following weekend she imagined him finding a place he could afford but across town and she saw him taking his essential things with him she wrote this all out in her journal. She never showed it to him. The next morning, this is Wednesday, the next morning, Bill comes to her and tells her, I've made arrangements to move out, so you'll have to figure out who's going to care for your son, your, it's his too, your son once you find work again. Amber doubted he would leave because he seldom stuck to what he was saying. But sure enough, Bill got his things ready by Sunday and drove off Sunday afternoon with his clothes and computer. She was bl totally blown away, not to mention relieved. Just so you know, there's a great deal of energy in your ideas and you can create a new future for yourself using the concept of quantum manifestation as described in these blog posts. One is called How to Manifest with a Quantum Field, another is Two Properties, of the quantum field to manifest your future create a new future with a quantum field and instead of use it, instead of resolutions use the quantum field and i have all the links down at the end of the show notes i offered her the relationship program at scientifichealer.com forward slash relationship and this helped but she required even a deeper relationship cleanse that's offered in an upgraded class since then, she seldom hears from Bill, and she's, he's stopped coming around to bother her. You too can start the energy healing processes I just mentioned in that five free five-step relationship program at scientifichealer.com forward slash relationship. And like I mentioned, it covers four of the 14 energetic connections you have with others and the outside world. So stay tuned for more about relationships and what to do about them. If this broadcast was helpful, please get a five star or thumbs up rating, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, this is Dr. Anastasia Chopolis. 